Hello, this is Mark Silverman, Managing Member and Founder of Silverman & Associates, and I'm also a Certified Financial Planner Professional. I want to welcome you to the Saving with Silverman podcast. I'm glad you're here. Each week, we'll discuss different financial planning topics because making smarter choices about your money impacts the quality of your life. Thanks so much for joining us this week on Saving with Silverman. I'm Walter Sorholt alongside certified financial planner professional Mark Silverman. He's the founder and managing member of Silverman and Associates, serving you not only in Tucson, but throughout Southern Arizona. You can check out Mark online by going to savingwithsilverman.com. Again, that's savingwithsilverman.com. Or at any point in time during our show today, you can call or text Mark at 520-333-7601. Again, that's 520-333-7601. Well, we have a lot of good things on today's agenda. We're going to be talking about what it looks like to sabotage your own retirement. Why do so many people do this? We'll look into uh, that conversation. Also, some of the mistakes that people make when it comes to estate planning. These are some really important things to be thinking about because you can really mess up a financial plan if you don't get the estate plan correct. We'll answer some of your questions on today's show and much, much more coming up in a few moments as well. But we're going to start off today's show, Mark, by talking about some awkward conversations. We've had plenty of those already before the show even started today, haven't we? (laughs) Sure. Off air, off air, uh, awkward conversations. Now time for the on-air versions of those awkward conversations. Now, we say a lot of this in jest, but truly sometimes being a good advisor means having some uncomfortable conversations. That just kind of comes along with the job. And so I'm going to give you a couple of different ways in which I could foresee an awkward conversation being sparked and how you've maybe helped people navigate some of those tricky situations and plan appropriately. And one of the tough things to talk about with any couple is going to be, hey, what happens when the first spouse passes away? And how does that affect the financial plan? Boy, you talk about something people want to avoid at all costs talking about. That's got to be one of them. And that's the thing, you know, these are uncomfortable conversations, but these are conversations, like you said, Walter, that need to be had. And so we want to plan accordingly. And most times one person is going to predecease the other. And so we need to plan for that as well. I think one of the big issues is, you know, what if, and I come across this a lot, where somebody, maybe the husband's the one that's managing the finances and they don't include the their spouse in those sorts of decisions or explain how things are done. That's why it's important, in my opinion, that you have an advisor, somebody that you trust um, that's there so the other spouse knows what to do and who to call and that sort of thing. But there's lots of concerns that can come about from having when one spouse passes away. Uh, it's hard enough to lose a spouse, but it's a whole other thing as far as how the financial aspects work and those sorts of things. And that's why having a plan is so important. Yeah, it's really important to have that plan in place. That's going to be a common theme, obviously, through today's show. But that's one awkward conversation that can pop up. What happens when the first spouse passes away? But then just as awkward, I guess, is talking about, all right, what if nobody passes away, but one or both people need nursing home care? And that's another subject people like to try and avoid, but maybe even more important to talk about than the death of the first spouse. It's just as important, and it's not a fun conversation, and I can't tell you how many times people will come in and say, well, I'm not planning on going in a nursing home. I don't think anybody plans on going into a nursing home, but you know, the numbers I see, one out of every two, maybe it's one out of every three people are going to spend some amount of time in a nursing home. So the question is, how are you going to pay for it? And if you don't have that conversation or you never address it, that means you're going to be self-paying, and that has its own set of issues. If you do have enough funds to do it, that's obviously an option. But if you don't, you need to address it and figure out what those options are going to be. And there's different ways of doing it. You know, I've talked about traditional long-term care insurance is always going to be an option. But I think there's better ways and better strategies that are out there. You know, there's certain annuities that can offer long-term care protection. That's an option. And there's also long-term care, which is probably the best way, in my opinion, that offers long-term care benefits. And that gives you some flexibility. You still have to uh, apply for those sorts of things and get qualified. But there's different strategies that are out there that weren't available, you know, five, even 10 years ago. So it's important that you understand that, at least have that conversation so you know exactly what that strategy is going to be going forward. We're talking with Mark Silverman of Silverman & Associates right here in Tucson in southern Arizona. Call or text him if you have a question about your particular financial plan or an issue that you might be facing 520-333-7601 520-333-7601 is the number. Again, that's 
7601. You can call or text Mark at that number. If you're talking about awkward conversations that you have to have with clients sometimes, Mark, I think we could throw in, are we going to work longer than maybe we had planned for? Uh, you know, I'm, I was dead set on retiring at 62, but now you're telling me that the plan would be better if I work until I'm, you know, 64 or something like that. A lot of people don't want to have that conversation either. No, but that's why you need a plan because so many advisors out there are really not advising what they're doing is selling selling investment or insurance products. And so if you're one of these people that's been sold, you know, whether it be, you know, some annuities or you're sold a bunch of mutual funds, do you really know if you're going to be able to achieve your goals, have the type of retirement, retire at a certain date with as much as you think you might need? You don't know unless you have a plan. And so that's why we make it a priority to make sure that our clients have a plan. So we do know that if you're going to have to work longer or not, because if you retire and don't have a plan, you really don't know if you're going to be financially successful in order to be able to be financially independent and do all the things that you want to do and to make sure that your money's going to last your life expectancy. So without a plan, you really don't know that. Now, Mark, we're going to talk a little bit later on about estate planning, but that's going to be part of our awkward conversation tour as well. Do our children understand our estate and legacy plan and how they fit into it, if at all? A lot of people don't like talking about money with their children. That's true, but it's important that if you don't want to get into specifics, you should let them know who they should call or who's going to be the the point of contact for your children. If something does happen, what if what if, you know, God forbid you and your spouse get into an auto accident and you know, the kids need to get involved. They need to know who to call, who's going to be the person in charge. What are the estate plans? Have you set up everything, titled everything appropriately so that your assets don't get caught up in probate? You know, you want to have these conversations. Make sure that your beneficiary designations are correct and appropriate. I can't tell you how many times we'll review beneficiary designations with people. I had a, a gentleman in about two years ago that called from the radio um, and he had his ex-wife named as the primary beneficiary. And he had Ooh. no idea. It was right on his statement. He, and that's the only reason why I knew. And so he needed, he, he had told his broker that, that he had changed it, but apparently they didn't get the memo. And so if something would have happened to him prior to that point, then you know his ex-wife would have got that money and not his child. So it's important that you review these sorts of things. That's pretty good uh, notice. Your broker's probably not going to be really on the lookout for fixing that kind of stuff in your plan. No, and it was right on his statement. I mean, that's the only reason why I knew as I was reviewing his documents and we noticed it right on the statement. And I had said, who's this person? Because he had told me that he had a son and it was a female name. And I said, you know, who's this? He goes, that's my ex-wife. I said, well, she's the beneficiary of your IRA account. Oops. <laughs> yeah, he goes, well, I told him to change it. I said, well, you might have told him to change it, but he didn't. So oh, geez. That's... <laughs> you might want to do that. Frustrating, to say the least, no doubt about it. Uh, all right, well, let me throw one more example out here, and then we'll get away from these awkward conversations, perhaps. Uh, how do we separate from an advisor, maybe perhaps this broker that didn't catch the uh, mistake on the beneficiaries there, uh, how do we separate from an advisor who we like as a person but now realize isn't a good fit for us anymore, or maybe they never were to begin with? Uh, yeah, it's an awkward conversation there. you got to keep friendships aside because this is your financial future, and you've got to do what's best for you and your family. And so so just because you're working with someone, if they're a good person, that's great. But if they're not doing the type of job that you need, that's a problem. And so you just want to make sure that you're getting the right advice. And if something doesn't seem right, go out and get a second opinion or go out and get a third opinion or a fourth opinion. Get as many opinions as you need until you feel that, that you're working with someone that's putting your interests first and that you have a comfort level with that you're okay to discuss these, have these awkward conversations with. And if the advisor's not asking these sorts of questions and just keeping it on a friendly level, which is okay, but not getting in depth, that's going to be a problem. And so you want to make sure that your needs are getting addressed and needs do change over time. You know, especially when you move from working to retirement, you want with someone that can build a plan that's able to do that. If they're there just to sell products and making no changes as time goes on, as your goals and needs change, but your portfolio is not changing, that's a problem. So you want to make sure that you're working with someone that it's qualified, that you get along with, of course, but that's willing to put the time in to make sure that you have a solid plan that's addressing your questions and your concerns that you feel comfortable with. Well, Mark, I know that your process not only helps navigate through some of these awkward conversations that we've highlighted through the first part of our show today, but is even more comprehensive than that. Tell us a little bit about the financial, physical, and how people can benefit from having one of these done. Sure, Walter. So whether you're a first-time listener to the show or you've heard me for a long time, 
If anything I've said makes sense or resonates with you, this is now your chance to come in and have a conversation with me in my office to go through this process we call the financial physical. And you actually go through it with me. I don't pawn you off on somebody else. I can assure you, I will not be trying to sell you investment or insurance products. I repeat, this is not a sales meeting. Rather, we're gonna discuss your values and goals in a way, honestly, you probably never have. This consultation is designed for both individuals as well as couples. However, if you are married, it is mandatory that both spouses attend this initial meeting. So whether you're still working or already retired, this is a great opportunity to see what it looks like to work with someone who's actually required to have a fiduciary responsibility to look out for your best interest at all times. And as part of the financial physical, we will discuss your cash reserves, debt if you have any, insurance, all types, and how to best allocate your assets. And we'll even benchmark where you are now financially compared to where you want to be. So you have an even better perspective of what's required to achieve your goals for the reasons that are important to you. This will become the foundation for developing a plan that gives you the highest probability of making that happen. This meeting will be valuable to you whether or not we decide to work together. There is no cost or obligation for this initial appointment. However, it is best suited for people who have saved at least $250,000. And as you probably are aware, I am a certified financial planner professional, and I believe the only one locally here on the radio in Tucson, and the going hourly rate to meet with a CFP such as myself can cost as much as $300 an hour. So this is a tremendous value and chance to finally get your financial house in order and keep it that way. And your only commitment is an hour or so of your time. We try our best to help everyone. However, our slots fill up quickly. So I can only guarantee a complimentary meeting to the next five people that contact us right now. Please don't procrastinate because making smarter choices about your money impacts the quality of your life. And again, that number to call or text to take advantage of that complimentary meeting with Mark is 520-333-7601. area code. 333-7601. Call or text that number and you can get in touch with Mark to talk a little bit more about your financial plan and set up a time to get this financial physical. Don't worry, you don't have to have all your statements and numbers and all those kinds of things pulled together at this exact moment. You're just calling or texting to express your interest in meeting. And Mark will take the next five callers or texters right now. 520-333-7601 is the number to call or text. Again, that's 520-333-7601. Mark serves you in Tucson and throughout Southern Arizona, certified financial planner professional at Silverman and Associates. 520-333-7601. Type that in your phone or write it down right now. Call or text 520-333-7601. 7601. Much more coming up on today's show. We'll dive in a little bit into some of the top estate planning mistakes that we see people make, how folks are self-sabotaging their retirements, and why you will want to avoid doing some of these things, and much more all around the corner right here on Saving with Silverman. When you reflect on your life, what would you like to see as your fondest memories? Summers at your favorite vacation spot? Ice cream with the grandkids after their first t-ball game? Maybe it was your great adventure across the world or volunteering with a local nonprofit. Of course, those memories are still in the future, although they're not as far away as you might think. Be sure you have a financial plan to make them happen. Don't find yourself worrying while enjoying that ice cream. Peace of mind is attainable in your retirement. With the proper planning, you can secure a meaningful retirement. At Silverman & Associates, we can help you make those dreams a reality. Schedule your visit with our team today. Call or text 520-333-7601. That's 520-333-7601. We want to make memories with you. Get started by calling or texting 520-333-7601. That's 520-333-7601. You finished school and worked hard to get your first job. You told yourself you'd save for retirement, but that old jalopy you bought when you were 16 broke down, so you bought a new one. You started to save, and soon you bought your first home. Then came pets, kids, and your world changed some more. You worked hard to provide for your family. You made sure your kids got a good education. You might be sending them to school right now, or maybe it's the grandkids' turn. And of course, you're now making sure your parents are looked after. Through the years you lovingly sacrificed for your family, now it's time to take care of you. Love others well by taking care of yourself 
Keep listening to Saving with Silverman to discover how to build a financial plan that will continue providing for you and the ones you love for years to come. Thanks for joining us on Saving with Silverman today. Walter Storholt here alongside Mark Silverman, the certified financial planner professional at Silverman and Associates, serving you in Tucson and throughout Southern Arizona. Find him online by going to savingwithsilverman.com. Again, that is savingwithsilverman.com. Lots of resources there on the website, and you can find out more information about our show here. In fact, you can listen to past shows there on the website as well, and just lots of good resources for you to check out there. So be sure to go to savingwithsilverman.com. And you can call or text Mark at any point in time to ask your questions about financial planning. 520-333-7601 is the number. That's 520-333-7601. Well, you know, with all things in the financial world, Mark, that you can't control, why would you sabotage your own retirement by messing up the things you can control? That's the question we're asking on today's show. So I want to discuss some of the ways that people sabotage their own financial health, maybe some of the stories where you've seen these things happen before, and how you help people correct it, fix it, and avoid it maybe all together. One great example would be obsessing about short-term ups and downs in the market. And I know there's probably a lot of people right now obsessing with the upside of that equation. Yeah, greed starts to come into play. And you know, one of the quotes that I love, I don't know who wrote it, but uh, I always like to use it is, there are plenty of difficult obstacles in your path. Don't allow yourself to become one of them. So yeah, getting too caught up in the ups and downs and the markets, they're always going to be volatility, especially lately, there's going to be more volatility and that's kind of probably here to stay. But I think, you know, if you if you have a lot of ups, you can expect a lot of downs. So you just need to make sure that you can handle the downs and too many people get caught up in the greed aspect of the markets and you have to understand that you have to focus on your goals and hopefully long-term goals before if you get too focused on the short-term things and if you're looking at your accounts every day, you know, getting stressed out if it's down and then getting excited if it's up and that sort of thing, that's no way to live. So it's important that you focus on your goals. And what we found with our clients is if you do focus on your goals rather than you know what the market's going to do today, you're going to be a lot more successful, have a lot more peace of mind, and you'll just be in a better situation uh, going forward. Yeah, I think that's probably a pretty good point. And it's one area where people self-sabotage a lot, not just obsessing on short-term and, uh, and ups and downs of the market, but just at any point in time, during the market cycle, people will self-sabotage themselves in that area. We could probably do a whole show just on that. But we'll keep things moving on to another different topic, and that would be Social Security. And a lot of people start Social Security at the wrong time, and that's a pretty good way to self-sabotage your own retirement. Well, for most people, you know, pensions don't exist anymore. So for most people, Social Security is really the only type of pension income that they have coming in. So what you want to do is you want to maximize that so you get the most amount of money out of it. The only caveat to that is life expectancy. So if you have a short life expectancy, you probably want to take it early. If you have a normal or longer life expectancy, and so you probably want to maximize that. And we actually have a report that we will run for uh, our clients that will show them the different strategies, you know, taking it at 62, taking it at full retirement age, which is probably somewhere between 66 to 67 for most people, or maximizing it, which is at age 70. The one thing that you need to understand is you get 8% compounded growth for each year you defer it. The only place you get 8% guaranteed these days is through the government. So you want to make sure you're making the best decision to maximize the only pension that most people will only ever going to have if you don't have a pension. So you just want to make sure you make the best decision because it's something once you turn it on, you really can't turn it off. So again, you want to make the best decision you can with the information that you have. So it's important that you work with someone that knows how to help you with those decisions. And we mentioned this a little bit in our conversation earlier about awkward conversations that you sometimes have with clients. And it's, again, another way to highlight a self-sabotage area here. Pretending like the risk of a nursing home stay in the future is so far off that you don't even really need to be thinking about it right now. And the time to be thinking about that stuff is way ahead of time. Yeah. And like I said before, for those of you that were listening, nobody wants to go into a nursing home. I've never had somebody come in and say, I'm going to be going into a nursing home. Let's plan on it. But the fact of the matter is, one out of every two or one out of every three people are going to spend some amount of time in a nursing home. So you need to have some type of strategy, whether that strategy is to self-pay or self-insure, fine, you know, making sure you have enough money to do that. But if you're not going to plan on doing that or you want to look at another way of leveraging, you need to look at other options. So it's important that you have these conversations and have a plan and have a strategy in case you do or you or your spouse have to go into a nursing home so you don't deplete all of your assets 
if one or the other has to go into the nursing home. So you need to have that conversation and figure out what way you're going to go moving forward. Yeah, I think that's a, a really important point to make there, Mark. And we're talking with Mark Silverman. He is the president and founder, managing member of Silverman and Associates, certified financial planner professional right here in the Tucson area. You can reach out to him by calling locally, 520-333-7601. You can text him at that number as well. Again, that's 520-333-7601. We're talking about the ways people self-sabotage in retirement. And if you assume that just because you like your job right now means that you're always going to love it and you're never going to want to retire, I'm sure you hear people say that all the time, right, Mark? Oh, I'm never going to retire. I'm just going to keep working forever. Whether it's because they love their job or don't think they can retire, well, think twice. Everybody, I think, is going to get to that point where they're going to have that change in mentality for one reason or another. Well, you know, things change. Companies get bought. I mean, there's lots of different circumstances that can change somebody's situation. The other problem is, you know, you don't know what can happen to you in the future. What if physically you're not able to do that job any longer and you haven't saved and you don't have a nest egg that you could, you know, live off of? So that's some of the risks that are involved there. That's why it's important to start saving you know, before you you hit age 50, it's important to start saving before that. If you wait till too long, you've got to make up for time, which means that you have to save more now in order to get to that point. And then some people just say, you know what, it's too late. We've been spending most of our income. I'm just going to work forever. Well, again, physically, maybe you can't do that. Uh, even if you like your job, you know, the situations can change. Maybe your company gets bought. Maybe there's layoffs. There's all, a lot of unforeseen circumstances that can happen. So it's important that you have a strategy or some type of plan B, if you will, that if you can't work, how are you going to support you and your spouse? Yeah, all good things to consider. And last but not least, Mark, another way we see people kind of sabotaging their own retirement, not identifying how much they need to spend for the rest of their life to have the lifestyle that they want. And the answer there might not be the same that we've had for the last several years. Your lifestyle might go up or down in retirement, depending on what choices you make. Absolutely. And what we find most people are is they want to keep the same lifestyle. Some people may even maybe want a different lifestyle, even a better lifestyle. Very few people want a, a less of a lifestyle in retirement than they had when they were working. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's very difficult. So in order to maintain that lifestyle, you have to look at things such as inflation. You know, we build 3% in as an inflation boost every year. You know, you need to make sure your income is increasing. And so you need to look for these sorts of things to make sure that you can have the type of lifestyle and do the sort of things that you that you want to in retirement that you deserve to do if you've done a good job of saving and investing and, and doing all those things. So it's important that you have a plan. It's important you have a strategy and have these sorts of conversations so you know what it's going to look like going forward because a lot of people shortchange themselves and don't realize how long of retirement they may have. If you retire at age, say, 65, you could be looking at a 30-year retirement very easily, and you need to plan for that. If you retire earlier, you can have a longer, you know, if somebody retires at age, at, let's say, age 55, you could be looking at a 40-year retirement. So you might have a retirement as long as you had in your working career. So it's important that you understand these sorts of things, and people don't really spend the time and think about inflation and longevity and all these other sorts of factors. That's why it's important you work with someone that can bring these things to your attention so you don't make these mistakes that we've seen other people make. And Mark, your process in particular helps people identify those opportunities for improvement. You call it the financial physical. Tell us a little bit more about that process and how easy it is to get started. Sure, Walter. So just like you get a second opinion on your health, why wouldn't you get a second opinion on your wealth? So whether you're a do-it-yourself or already working with someone, this is now your chance to go through this process like Walter mentioned called the financial physical. Do you know what your investments are costing you? If you're still working, are you on track to having the type of retirement you have always envisioned? Or if you're already retired, do you know if you or your spouse are at risk of running out of money while trying to maintain your current lifestyle? And I can assure you, I will not be trying to sell you investment or insurance products. I repeat, this is not a sales meeting. This is much different than what some of the other people are mentioning on the radio. In this initial meeting, we'll address issues of importance to you, provide an overall view of your situation, and give you some general advice on what needs to be completed. This consultation is designed for both individuals as well as couples, However, if you are married, it is mandatory that both spouses attend this initial meeting. So whether you're still working or already retired, this is a great opportunity to see what it looks like to work with someone who is actually required to have a fiduciary responsibility to look out for your best interest at all times. This meeting will be valuable to you whether or not we decide to work together. There is no cost or obligation for this initial appointment. However, it is best suited for people who have saved at least $250,000. 
And as you probably are aware, I am a certified financial planner professional, and I believe the only one local here on the radio in Tucson, and the going hourly rate to me with a CFP such as myself can cost as much as $300 an hour. So this is a tremendous value and chance to finally get your financial house in order and keep it that way. And your only commitment is an hour or so of your time. Just as you want to reach a healthy life from a physical standpoint, you also want to reach and maintain great financial health. So our financial physical is just what the doctor ordered. We try our best to help everyone. However, our slots do fill up quickly. So I can only guarantee a complimentary meeting for the next five people that contact us right now. Please don't procrastinate because making smarter choices about your money impacts the quality of your life. And again, that number to call is 520-333-7601. And we make it easy. You can call or you can just text that number as well. A lot of people are doing that more often these days. It is an easy way to communicate, isn't it? 520-333-7601 is the number to call or text. Again, that's 520-333-7601. Mark serves you in Tucson, throughout Southern Arizona. He's the founder of Silverman and Associates. And if you want to get that financial physical, that checkup on where you stand financially right now, but also what's your financial health looking into the future, now's your chance to set that appointment, set that meeting to have that conversation. 520-333-7601. That's in the number to call or text. 520-333-7601. 7601. Stay right there. More coming up on today's edition of Saving with Silverman. What are some of the top estate planning mistakes we see people make? We'll cover that and more coming up. When you reflect on your life, what would you like to see as your fondest memories? Summers at your favorite vacation spot? Ice cream with the grandkids after their first t-ball game? Maybe it was your great adventure across the world or volunteering with a local nonprofit. Of course, those memories are still in the future, although they're not as far away as you might think. Be sure you have a financial plan to make them happen. Don't find yourself worrying while enjoying that ice cream. Peace of mind is attainable in your retirement. With the proper planning, you can secure a meaningful retirement. At Silverman & Associates, we can help you make those dreams a reality. Schedule your visit with our team today. Call or text 520-333-7601. That's 520-333-7601. We want to make memories with you. Get started by calling or texting 520-333-7601. That's 520-333-7601. You've got questions. We've got answers. Keep listening to Saving with Silverman. Planning for retirement is very important. We want to make sure that you're on the right track, and that's why we're here on Saving with Silverman. Walter Storholt here alongside Mark Silverman. He's the founder and managing member of Silverman and Associates, serving you in Tucson and throughout southern Arizona. Find us online at savingwithsilverman.com, or you can call or text Mark at 520 333 7601. That's 520-333-7601. You know, Mark, there are some people who don't really care at all about leaving a financial legacy, but for those who do want to do it, it's really important to eliminate some of the common estate planning mistakes that we see. And there are a lot of them that get made frequently that people have to be on the lookout for. One great example to kick off the conversation would be failing to plan for expenses that can be foreseen, especially I think healthcare is probably a big part of this conversation. Yeah, and you know, healthcare is a big thing and there's so many changes, who knows what's gonna happen for a lot of us, uh, you know, next year, for example, it's your guess is as good as mine, but for people that are already on, you know, Medicare, I think you're okay. If you have a good supplement, you're probably in good shape. But for those of you that, you know, retire before age 65, it could be a challenge to see what you might be paying if you can't get on a spouse's plan and you have to go out and get your own insurance. I know here in Arizona, there's not a lot of options. In fact, I think there's only one right now. So something's got to change, I think, hopefully for the better. I always hate to say, you know, it can't be any worse, but, you know, who knows with the way that the mess of the healthcare situation is. But, you know, we've talked about long-term care a couple times in the show, but I think that's an important aspect. You know, if you're married, you want to have some type of plan or strategy so you can protect the other spouse. 
If you're single, you could make the argument that it doesn't really matter because the state could take over for you and, and take all of your assets and, and what does it matter? But again, if you're doing some type of estate planning or legacy planning, if you will, and you want to be able to give your kids or grandkids a certain amount of money, you do want to have a strategy in place so that you aren't spending all of your assets for a nursing home care situation. So it's important to have these kind of conversations and you know, the estate planning aspect or legacy planning, healthcare planning aspect is important discussion to have. Yeah, it's a big one. And uh, one example of that is when there are the wrong beneficiary designations on a form. You told us that story a few minutes ago about, boy, just the impact that uh, that you saw when somebody had an incorrect beneficiary designation. So it's worth repeating here in the estate planning mistakes conversation got to make sure your beneficiary designations are up to date. Yeah. And I mean, I'll share that for those of you that weren't listening earlier in the show, I'll give the the example, which happened was a, a gentleman came in actually from the radio about uh, two years ago. And he came in, he had mentioned that he was divorced and he had one son. So I was reviewing his documents. He brought in his brokerage statement and right on the brokerage statement, it actually said a person's name. It was a female name. So I went on to ask him and said, you know, who is this person? He goes, that's my ex-wife. I said, well, do you realize she's the, uh, primary beneficiary of your IRA account. So if something were to happen to you, she would be the beneficiary. Your son wouldn't get anything. And so he said, well, I told my broker to change that. And I said, well, you might have, and but they didn't do it. In fact, it's right on your statement. So if you had that argument, you know, it's on your statement every month and you kind of missed it. So it's important to review your beneficiary designations, I would say at least annually. So, you know, kids, you know, marital situations can change. Maybe, you know, you have new grandkids that you want to add to the uh, beneficiary designations. You want to review these sorts of things on a regular basis. It's, it's important. And you could change beneficiary designations anytime you want. You just notify the, uh, the company that you're working with. But it's good to review these things, making sure that they're current and updated. So it's often overlooked. So it's something that's very easy to fix, but uh, again, important to do. Yeah, no doubt about it. Again, make sure you update those beneficiary designations. Way too often people are making that common estate planning mistake. Another one that we see frequently is when folks fail to take steps to avoid conflict and potential litigation among heirs and family members. Try to put structure in place now to avoid conflict down the road. Yeah, you want to make sure you have a, a solid estate plan. I'm not saying, and I'm not an estate planning attorney, but I can tell you, you know, if you have a complicated situation or you have ways that you want a certain thing, you know, probably makes good sense to have some type of plan in place, whether it be a, you know, a living trust or something like that, to make sure that your wishes are going to be carried out. It's often, again, overlooked, but something that can be done to make sure that your money gets dispersed the proper way and the most tax efficient way as well. I think also to avoid litigation too, and this is not something that we sell, but I think it makes a lot of sense to have an umbrella policy. They're fairly inexpensive, usually a couple hundred dollars a year. But if you were to get sued, you know, in a car accident or something at your home, that sort of thing, it protects you up to, you know, million, two million, depending on what you purchase. So it does protect those assets because if your insurance doesn't cover only covers you up to a certain amount, the rest of that money could be taken from your, you know, investable assets. So it's important that you that you look at something like that. And I think another one we could add to this list, Mark, would be transferring real estate while you're still living instead of at death. Now, that seems to make sense. That's kind of counterintuitive. Here we're saying be proactive and uh, put in place structure to avoid conflict and litigation. But now we're saying don't transfer real estate while you're still living. Wait until you know, your time passes before you do something. So it's a little bit of the opposite here. You're absolutely right, Walter. I mean, one of the things is, and we're not giving uh, tax advice here, but you know, you get a certain thing when assets get transferred at death, you get a step, what's known as a step up in basis, which basically means that if you had a large gain and you pass away, the cost basis of that, you know, potential, say stock, for example, would be stepped up to the date of death rather than what you had paid for it. So your beneficiaries get that step up, which is a benefit. So, you know, when you have things titled properly, it's not, you know, it might sound easy just to put yourself on title, you know, have your kids put on title, or if you have a, a you know, a checking account or investment account to just add your kids as a joint owner. That's not necessarily always the best way. You might be better off doing what's known as a POD or TOD, which is payable on death or transfer on death. So if something were to happen to you, they get access to it, but they have no access to that money until you would pass away. So that's a smarter way, in my opinion, to handle these sorts of things. And you don't, it doesn't cost anything. You can just call the financial institution. We set these up with our clients on all of our accounts that don't have beneficiary designations. We do TODs, which 
just transfer on death, but you can go to the bank and add and get that form and fill it out and do that as well. So I think that makes a lot of sense for a lot of people, but a lot of people aren't aware of those sorts of things. Yep. We're talking with Mark Silverman of Silverman and Associates here in Tucson and Southern Arizona. And last but not least, if we're talking about estate planning mistakes, if you're ignoring tax implications of your estate, well, you're making maybe the biggest mistake you can make in this conversation. Yeah. And we, you know, like I said, I'm not a CPA, but we work with CPAs. And so we do a lot of tax planning here in the office. So that makes sure that we're the assets are the most tax efficient as they possibly can. Should you disperse it from this account or that account, we'll give advice in, in that regard as well. So it's important that you understand that you want the assets to pass in the most tax efficient manner, which sometimes can involve insurance or, or things titled a certain way, so like we discussed just a few minutes ago. So it's it's important that you understand those. You know, we can talk about, you know, stretch or inherited IRAs. A lot of people aren't familiar with those, but that's something that we try to to educate our clients on so that their IRAs can pass on to their beneficiaries in a more tax efficient manner so they don't become fully taxable, which can be a problem for your heirs. All good things to consider. And Mark, I know some of these estate planning conversations and questions, that's just kind of a, uh, a small example of how in-depth you go with the financial physical to help people fully prepare for their retirement. Exactly. So Walter, you know, whether somebody's a first-time listener to the show or they've heard me for a long time, if anything I've said makes sense or resonates with you, this is your now, your opportunity to come and have a conversation with me in my office to go through this process we call the financial physical. And I can assure you, I will not be trying to sell you investment or insurance products. I repeat, this is not a sales meeting. Rather, we're going to discuss your values and goals in a way, honestly, you probably never have. This consultation is designed for both individuals as well as couples. However, if you are married, it is mandatory that both spouses attend this initial meeting. So whether you're still working or already retired, this is a great opportunity to see what it looks like to work with someone who's actually required to have a fiduciary responsibility to look out for your best interest at all times. And as part of the financial physical, we will discuss your cash reserves, debt if you have any, insurance, all types, and how to best allocate your assets. And we'll even benchmark where you are now financially compared to where you want to be. So you have an even better perspective of what's required to achieve your goals for the reasons that are important to you. This will become the foundation for developing a plan that gives you the highest probability of making that happen. This meeting will be valuable to you whether or not we decide to work together. There is no cost or obligation for this initial appointment. However, it is best suited for people who have saved at least $250,000. And as you probably are aware by now, I am a certified financial planner professional, and I believe the only one local here on the radio in Tucson, and the going hourly rate to meet with a CFP such as myself can cost as much as $300 an hour. So this is a tremendous value and chance to finally get your financial house in order and keep it that way. And your only commitment is an hour or so of your time. We do try our best to help everyone, however, our slots fill up quickly, so I can only guarantee a complimentary meeting to the next five people that contact us right now. Please don't procrastinate because making smarter choices about your money impacts the quality of your life. And here is the number that you need to call or text to reach Mark Silverman and have this conversation and set up that time for your own financial physical. 520-333-7601 is the number. That's 520-333-7601. You can call or text Mark at that number. 520 520- 333-7601. If you're retired or approaching retirement in the next little while, now is the time to make the right decisions with your financial plan. So get on the right track. Have that conversation. 520-333-7601 is the number. Again, that's 520-333-7601. Don't delay. Make sure you're not procrastinating your financial choices. That's another big mistake. We talk about mistakes a lot on today's show. That's a big one, too. 520-333-7601. Call or text Mark at that number. 520-333-7601. Stay there. We'll wrap up today's show by answering some of your questions coming up on Saving with Silverman. Learn the path to a worry-free retirement. Keep listening to Saving with Silverman. Time to answer some of your questions here on Saving with Silverman. Thanks for joining us this week. Walter Storholt here alongside Mark Silverman, certified financial planner professional and the founder and managing member of Silverman and Associates. Call 520-333-7601 to get in touch. You can also text that number as well, 520-333-7601, or visit us online, savingwithsilverman.com. 
Com. That's also where you can submit questions to be featured in the mailbag, where we take your questions each week here on the show. We've got three good ones to highlight with Mark this week, the first of which comes to us from Raymond in the foothills. And Raymond says, I own my own business and haven't paid much into Social Security over the years, even though I've had a nice income. Is this going to be problematic for me in retirement? For some reason, I've never worried about it until now at the ripe old age of 58. Well, Raymond, that's a great question, and I can certainly relate being self-employed. I understand the whole Social Security thing, but you know what you need to realize is whatever you pay in, it doesn't mean you get that out. So the people that pay the most into it, you're not getting a certain benefit. So a lot of times you're better off just doing something yourself, which is where I'm kind of pointing you in that direction. It's important that you don't rely on, on Social Security too much, especially if you're not going to have a huge Social Security benefit. And even if you did have a big Social Security benefit, you certainly can't rely on that more than probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 25 to 30 percent of your overall retirement income. So the onus is going to be on you and you need to have something in place. So you need to be putting money away. I don't know when you're planning on retiring or if you're planning on retiring, but you need to start putting money away or something that can draw you can draw an income stream off of. And you do have a, quite a few different options that are available, especially that work well for people that are, are self-employed. So I would encourage you to get started on that now. Certainly reach out to us or reach out to whoever your advisor is if you're working with someone and start putting money away in, into some type of program that you'll be able to draw upon when you do finally retire to get you the income that you're going to need. Yeah, it's a good question, though, Raymond, and thank you for submitting that one to us. Tom has our next question. He is in Green Valley. Tom says, I've heard people say that the only kind of life insurance you should ever buy is term insurance. Is that true? Well, Tom, another good question. So, you know, there's lots of different types of insurance. I think it, it depends on what you're trying to do or what you're trying to accomplish. I think that there's a need for different types of insurance for different types of situations. Term is, of course, the cheapest. So a lot of people recommend you buy term because it is cheap but something like 98% of all term policies never pay out a benefit because what happens is you buy, say, a 20-year term, and then that 20 years comes due, and you're still alive. So yes, you had coverage during those years if you would have died. However, once you're, you know, that term is up and you're still alive, that policy's gone and you have nothing to show for it. So there are different types of policies out there that, you know, whole life, there's universal life, variable life, depending on what you're trying to accomplish. So I think it really needs to be more specific as far as what you're looking at doing. Are you looking for a death benefit? Are you looking for, you know, income in retirement? Are you looking for some long-term care coverage? There's lots of different uses of life insurance that a lot of people don't think about of how it could be used because the, the big benefit of life insurance is it can be used, the death benefit is tax-free. And so there's nothing else out there that gives you a tax-free death benefit. And so it can be used for legacy planning and that sort of thing. So it really depends on what the purpose is. So to answer that, you know, we would need more information, but you may want to look at some different types of policies, again, depending on uh, what it is you're trying to do. Yeah, I think that's the big piece of the puzzle there is the purpose. Yeah, if you are if you just want something that's going to, you know, replace a little bit of income, you know, if you pass away while you've got a family, well, term insurance, probably the first initial initial reaction there, but then whole life and all these other things have their usefulness. It's just, what's your situation going to be, Tom? And that's a good question. And Mark can help you answer that question and navigate through that when you come in for a financial physical. And we'll give you more details on that before we wrap up. One more question here for you, Mark Silverman. This one comes to us from Elizabeth. Elizabeth is in Vail and says, I'm retiring in six months and I'm worried about what will happen if we have a market crash before I get to the finish line. Do you think I'll be okay for the next six months? Great question. It is a good question. Well, Elizabeth, six months is a short period of time, and I'm not trying to scare anybody, but I, one, don't have a crystal ball. So where the market's gonna be six months from now, who knows? It could be higher, it could be lower, but what I will tell you is we are one day closer to a correction every day. This is the second longest bull market we've ever been in. And so with that being said, there is a chance that the markets could be lower than they are right now. If you're within six months, you probably want to be more protected, meaning you probably can't take, you know, if, if this is, say, 2007, and then we know the market started correcting late 07, early 08, you know, if the markets were to go, you know, 40% down, how would that affect? It's probably not going to help your situation. It could be detrimental to where you maybe you won't be retiring in six months. So you do want to understand the amount of risk that's in your portfolio. We're certainly happy to help. But if you're working with someone, you should be having this conversation with them or you should have done doing some planning before you decide to retire in six months to make sure that you're going to be financially independent and okay to achieve all your goals and not running out of money and all these sorts of things. And so it's important that you have a plan before you 
actually quit your job, in my opinion. We certainly have had people come in that have already been retired and running the numbers and you know, hopefully most of those people are going to be okay. In some cases, they weren't. And so we've had to help, you know, encourage them to maybe curb their spending or reduce their lifestyle in order to be financially stable and not run out of money. So no predictions on the market. But what I can tell you is we're, we are at all time highs. So with that being said, you know, who knows, maybe this will run in a couple more years, but you should be prepared that a correction is normal. And I don't know if it's this year or next year or the following year, but you know, something has to happen at some point. And again, Mark, tell us a little about what your financial fit physical process looks like and and how you're going to help kind of people address issues like life insurance, like uh, what should I do if the stock market, you know, might crash in the next six months, or that's a worry that I have. How do I address it? Social security, all the good questions we've had on today's show. Yeah, Walter. So, you know, I've answered some good questions today. So I appreciate those that have submitted those questions. You can go online to Saving with Silverman and go to the uh, radio button and, and submit your question. Maybe it'll get mentioned here and answered on the show. So now is my chance to ask you a question. And can you answer it honestly and objectively as possible? Aside from the happy hellos and how's the family, and aside from the occasional lunch or golf game, I mean, I get it. I'm as much friends with so many of my clients, they become true friends over the many years. But I think the question has to be asked, especially in light of the stakes. Is your current financial advisor truly adding value beyond a doubt? I repeat, is your current financial advisor truly adding value? It's a valid question as a friendship or just relationship allows you not to be in a position to ask those critical questions. Are you talking about taxes? Are you talking about social security and income and diversification and insurance and risk and estate planning and healthcare? Are you having those annual reviews, but hopefully it's more frequently than that? Is there detailed follow-up? Is there accountability? If you are, if all of that is happening, congratulations because you've got a great relationship and send your financial advisor a thank you. But if you're not, if you're not having that, if you're not feeling the value, if you're not having these in-depth conversations, then you owe it to yourself and really to your family to have a conversation with someone else because if you don't, you're the one that's going to suffer. You're the one that's going to pay the cost and it'll cost you in more ways than you'll ever know. Let us prove to you how we can help your money go further in retirement. Let us show you with our financial physical. I believe you'll be surprised at what you'll learn and this won't cost you anything. Give us a call or send us a text to 520-333-7601, 520-333-7601, that's 520-333-7601, or check us out online at savingwithsilverman.com, that's savingwithsilverman.com. Please don't procrastinate because making smarter choices about your money impacts the quality of your life. And again, if you want to get your own financial physical and find out where you stand financially currently and what you need to do to improve going forward, just pick up the phone and call or text Mark Silverman. 520-333-7601 is that number. Again, 520-333-7601. 7601 serving you in Tucson and Southern Arizona. You can find Mark Silverman by calling or texting him at 520-333-7601. Especially if you're approaching retirement, like the question we had just a minute ago, six months away she was and worried if the market's going to crash. Yeah, time for a second opinion on your financial plan. Make sure you can get to the finish line when you want to. 520-333-7601. Call or text Mark today. 520-333-7601. This is Saving with Silverman. And Mark, I appreciate all the time on the show today. And uh, we'll look forward to doing this again next week. Walter, always happy to be here. I want to thank you for taking the time to listen. I hope you receive some value and uh, have a great week, everybody. Again, if you want to get in touch, call or text Mark at 520-333-7601. We'll talk to you again next time on Saving with Silverman. Silverman and Associates Wealth Management LLC is a registered investment advisor. Information presented is for educational purposes only and does not intend to make an offer or solicitation for the sale or purchase of any specific securities product, service, or investment strategy. Investments involve risk and, unless otherwise stated, are not guaranteed. Be sure to first consult with a qualified advisor, tax professional, or attorney before implementing any strategy or recommendation discussed herein.